Hey, folks. Jeff Eubanks, Eubanks Family Homestead, where hobby homesteading and pumpkin chunking is a way of life. Get, not, not yet. Not yet. These pumpkins were donated by my sister-in-law from her uh, subdivision. They have them at their clubhouse, I think. So each year at Thanksgiving, she brings the pumpkins left over from the Halloween series of of uh, what's it holidays that's it so the critters love them of course we have to watch Jill Jill is our resident lush last year she got a hold of a fermented pumpkin and she pulled an Otis on us she couldn't even stand up the next day <laughs> so uh, I feel sure that she got a hold of a a uh, pumpkin that was fermented so uh, and we're also going to uh, put one of these in our chicken coop because pumpkin seeds is a natural um, warming treatment for chickens. I don't know who figured that out, but it makes sense to me. So <clears throat> what you do when you're feeding pumpkins to livestock, now you can throw it out and they'll, they'll bite on stuff like that. But you have to get to the innards of the pumpkin. The innards of the pumpkin. That's not, this is the outards. This right here is the outards. The innards are what we want. So I think, I, well, I looked it up on the, the YouTube, the easiest way to open a pumpkin. And uh, this is how. Huh. Didn't see that coming, did you? Let's see. Huh. Didn't see that coming either, folks. Missed it with my knife. Now I better not shoot it. Golly. My glasses just fell off. Oh, it cracked on this side. There we go. There we go. Clean my knife off. Don't want pumpkin guts on my knife. All right, now, oh yeah. All right, here you go, come eat it. Bon appetit. Cooper, please be quiet. Come on, come on, goat, goat, goat. Pumpkin goat. Okay, so if you've ever wondered how a goat eats pumpkin, about like that. And, uh, of course, we got two standoffers over there. Poor Strawberry and Shelby. So, um, yeah, they, they really seem to like that a lot. Of course, you're seeing Gidget, Lily, and Leo back here in the background. That's uh, Gidget's kids from, dang, almost two years ago now. Uh, we were going to breed them this year, but just hadn't been able to get a buck lined up to provide his services for my goats. And uh, I've got goats that are too old. I couldn't just bring one in here because little Miss uh, the Lush here, Jill, she's way too old to try to birth anything. And Strawberry over there, she's too old as well, in my opinion. And of course, you know, Leo, he can't birth goats. Uh, he can't provide me goats either because Leo is now a Louise. But anyway, so yeah, that's all I do. I just bust it open. And 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 last year when when Jill got all all um, messed up and drunk, I had put several of them out here. So this time around, I'm gonna put one a day. One a day. Of course, looks like them two right, those three right there, are gonna get everything if I don't do something else. See if I can open another one. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Is it opened enough? Strawberry, I know you look pitiful, but you. Oh, Michael. Uh,
Oh, that stunk like a like a pumpkin. <clears throat> so there you have it, folks. That's how you feed pumpkins to a goat, and uh, they really like them. Now I've got a few smaller ones. I'm gonna take over and throw one in for the chickens. We've had to uh, keep our chickens caged up. Oh Lord, for over a month and a half. Uh, you can look back through our videos. Strawberry the goat with this uh, crazy harness around her neck had a terrible, terrible sore on her side. And uh, that apparatus has been the only way I've been able to keep her from uh, just, you know, scratching that sore to the point. And it's almost healed up. It is almost healed up. But... I had to lock the chickens up because I caught the chickens pecking at her side. I mean, it was just bleeding and the chickens were standing there pecking at it. And I never in a million years would dream that that goat would have stood still to let them do that, but she was. Oh Lord, I was convinced that that goat was gonna die this year. I you know, was gonna get an infection or something, but she hasn't. And I mean, right now, the the bald spot it's not a sore anymore the bald spot's about that big about about as big as a pack of cigarettes <laughs> and um, so i'm hoping to be able to take that harness off over here in about another month but uh, like i said that has that has been the only thing i've been able to put on her to keep her from scratching it either with her horn or her bottom teeth and just making it look like ground beef it was just i was ashamed to even talk about it but she's doing uh she's 95 percent now so hopefully by you know sometime in january we'll take the rest of that harness off of her collar the collar of shame the cone of shame that's something i come up with uh necessity is the mother of invention so so anyway i'm gonna roll this a uh, whirl wheelbarrow over there and throw some in for the chickens and uh then uh, the pumpkin chunking will be over you know i started to lie and tell y'all these were the spare pumpkins left over from our pumpkin patch this year, but that wouldn't be true because we didn't grow no pumpkins. You know, I've never even tried to grow a pumpkin. Never even tried to grow a pumpkin. I don't know what all it entails. <clears throat> I put this flannel. Who? Shelby? Yeah, well, she'll get over and get something. All right. So here's my cannibalistic chickens, and I knew that. Uh, I knew that chickens to other chickens, if there was a, a chicken in the flock that ever got a, a wound, that the other chickens would peck it and finally kill it. I knew that. Uh, quail, pheasants, same way. Never many years would I have figured that we would have been attacking a goat, or that the goat would have, you know, just stand there and let them do it. So. Uh, so we got them locked up right now, but I feed them. <laughs> they got a dog glue to get in and out of the weather. And uh, I'm gonna give them a pumpkin now. This pumpkin is gonna be easier to open, watch this. I'm just gonna take it. We're christening the floor, the ground out here with a pumpkin. <laughs> the pull, pull tab come off of it. Yeah, that one's kind of rotten on the inside. May have them drunk chicken tomorrow. Anyhow, all right, chick chicks, where you at? chicken chickens we're still getting about three eggs a week not a whole lot of egg laying going on well look at the crazy things over in the corner maybe you're a little too close honey oh, okay. I figured that it jumped on that thing like chickens on a June bug and or watermelon or in this case pumpkin so man it's uh it's warmed up out here it was 29 degrees this morning when I got up at 7-ish. And now I'm going to say it's 50, between 53 and 57 degrees out here. Let's see here. My phone might tell me. It might. If I had my glasses on, I could see it. But anyway, should I ask what the temperature is? Yeah. What's the temperature in Woodstock, Georgia? It's 53 degrees outside. 
I said between 53 and 57 degrees. <laughs> Guys, you beat your heart out. <laughs> so, he who? Didn't he die? Well, yeah, but you know. Well, I'm gonna go on the other side. I I was really anticipating the chicken putting on a good show eating that pumpkin. Maybe if you come over here, they'll go over there and you can get the the full effect of a chicken feeding frenzy. Folks, chickens aren't as smart as they would like for you to believe they are. They're scared of it, I guess. Oh well. Anyway, the seeds are beneficial in worming the chickens naturally. And, and like I said, I don't know how that is or anything else, but that's what I've always read on the internet. We, uh, we do a lot of internet reading around here, folks. I mean, we are internet savvy. Of course, usually when I find something on the internet and read it, if I go back the next day to try to find it again, it's gone. I think it's the government. They take down the stuff that's beneficial to you. Yeah, they do. They, they say, whoa, you banks has done, done searching out this information. We got to take it down. He may be trying to plan a, I don't know what, worldwide takeover maybe? You think, honey? You think I could take over the world? No. Why not? I, I, Are you calling me dumb? No. Oh, I'm just saying I don't think you could. I got the brain power. I got the looks. Everybody tells me I'm cute. So there you have it, folks. That's, uh, that's, uh, we don't have a lot going on on the farm right now. I cut a tree down last weekend. I got one that I'm going to cut down up there next to the, uh, the new garden spot. Me and my buddy Don is going to be gardeners next year. And so I've already started prepping that. Uh, honeybees are in survival mode, folks. It's just uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, we're learning, still learning, you know. Uh, I would have swore that those bee, uh, chickens would have just been all over that. But anyway. So, uh, but yeah, so uh, hopefully we'll be uh, bringing some good news about honeybees here in a couple of months. Bella in the pasture. Who? Bella. Uh, yeah. How did she get in the pasture? Uh, well, you know how she is. Bella. If you're anywhere close by, she'll go through hell and high water to get you. You know that. But, but see, my boy Cooper, he's over there in the backyard. He knows better than this. Bella. Hi. Come here. Come here. Bella, sit down. Christy, stop walking. Sit down, Bella. Sit. Sit down. Sit down. If you bite me, I'm going to throw you over those chickens, and they'll eat you up. Yep. And how'd you get in the pasture, huh? Oh, now Cooper don't like it that I'm holding you. Yeah. Did you slip through a hole, a goat hole? Yeah. Yeah, this is Bella. She's our resident princess. Yeah, yes you are. You got stuff in your beard. And she, if she ever gets anything in her mouth, and you say, what do you have in your mouth? She's just like a kid. She swallows it. It doesn't matter what it is. Cooper, he'll spit it out. I'll say, spit it out, Cooper. He'll spit it out. So, so anyway, folks, that's how things are going here on the farm. Kind of slow, kind of slow. Uh, like I said, we're just uh, in survival mode with the bees. Of course, we're still taking care of our goats. Uh, the chicken still hadn't attacked that pumpkin yet, but uh, uh, the goats have really enjoyed theirs, looks like. And like I said, oh, I got, and of course, y'all saw my videos about getting my tractor back in operation. I mowed all the, the open land here a few weeks ago. So, uh, you know, it's just been uh, pretty good. I had to replace a hot water heater, I'm not a hot water heater, a dishwasher the other day. That wasn't enjoyable at all. But uh, I'm going to church Sunday, so we'll, we'll get forgiveness for everything I thought and said during that whole process. But anyway, <clears throat> so uh, we're just, uh, you know, here on the farm. So uh, you may not see a lot of content from us over the next few months. Uh, you know, maybe we may put some type of little shorts up, something like that. But there's just not a whole lot going on. Uh, the, um, the daylight is fighting against it. Yes, yeah, makes you sad on it. You know, it gets dark about 20 minutes after I get home from work now, so can't get much done during the week. And of course, I am off on Fridays now, so I get a lot of time, a lot more time on weekends to do things, which is enjoyable. So anyhow, just um, like and share. Tell your friends about the family folk here on 
Eubank Family Homestead. Tell them to stop by. Oh, Lord, my camera lady's hot. She's over fanning herself. She's fixing to fall out on me, so I better wrap this thing up. All right, go down there and smash that like button, smash that uh, subscribe button, and smash the share button. And uh, the notification, just smash all the buttons and come back and see us anytime you can. Eubanks Family Homestead, or Hobby Homestead, and, well, it's what we do. See ya. Bye.